Yes. Kelly Church are from the Grand Traverse Band, of Anishinaabe in southwestern Michigan, and you're holding some material in your hand. What are we looking at here? This is black ash, and this comes from the black ash tree, which grows in the swamps around Michigan. This is um, the growth ring of the tree. We cut down the tree in the forest. When we find a black ash tree, we look to make sure that it's growing straight, the bark is straight. We make sure that um, it doesn't have many knots, and then we check the growth rings and look for about a nickel slit. And then what I do with this growth ring, after I cut it down, is we pound the growth rings off. And when I say that, I mean we take the back side of an axe, we pound on it from one end of the log to the other, and the growth rings begin to release. This is one growth ring that released from the log, and then what I do to get my basket material is I split it. And you can see here this growth ring is split. And you can see here, if I take it with my fingers, how I can split down. And here's the shiny, beautiful material that we use to make our baskets with. Okay. How was uh, black ash important to the Anishinaabe in your territory? Um, the Anishinaabe in Michigan have been using black ash materials. And out, actually, I'm going to expand that to the northeast. Um, everywhere black ash grows, and it is only in the northeast of the United States, they've been making baskets out of it. Here in Michigan, we've been making baskets for centuries for utilitarian purposes, for um, baby cradles, market baskets, carrying wood, picking berries, all sorts of things. And then as um, tourists began to come around into the native areas, you know, as um, non-natives moved in, then they began to make um, more tourist baskets just to sell, to eat. They would sell their baskets and feed their families with it. There is an invasive species called the emerald ash borer. You're telling me it came in on a ship, a foreign ship? Yes. And it's uh, taking off and it's making life very hard for the ash trees. It is. And this is the emerald ash borer here. And you can see that that is a penny and that bug is smaller than a penny. It came in on a ship from China um, probably in the 1990s. We didn't discover it in Michigan until 2002. And since that time, we've lost about 40 million or more ash trees in our state since 2002. And it's been spreading out of our state to Indiana, Illinois, Wisconsin, um, Pennsylvania. And in Pennsylvania, it was discovered in November 2007. They did some testing on their growth rings to see how long it had been there. And it has been in Pennsylvania since 2001, which means that this bug is six years ahead of us, you know, six years ahead of where we think it is. So places that haven't positively identified it yet, such as uh, New York or Minnesota, even though they haven't seen it, they most likely haven't. What can people do to protect the trees? To protect the trees, just what we can do is slow the spread, and that means not moving infected ash or not moving ash wood. That is one thing we can do definitely. But in the long, thinking in long terms, we stand to lose 803 million in Michigan alone, and the Department of Agriculture predicts the entire ash resource of North America will be lost. So seed collection is the most important thing we can do. Black ash trees only seed every five to six years, but once the bug infects the trees, we can lose them in three. So we need to collect seeds. White ash, you can get seeds from every one or two years, but that is what we need to do. Looking at some of these baskets, what do these trees, what does the black ash tree and the white ash tree mean to you? It means a part of our cultural tradition. It's part of our ancestors. Um, you were telling me a story a minute ago about the uh, the lightning that hit the tree in The Naturalist, this Robert Redford movie. Well, we have creation stories, you know, that about the black ash tree, and we have stories um, about lightning hitting a black ash tree. And this is where we learned that we could make baskets from it. So there's all kinds of stories of where and how we've been given this um, this knowledge from the Creator, and it's also something that we passed on orally, you know, year after year after year for hundreds of years, and we're looking at losing a cultural tradition that's been passed on for centuries in a matter of decades due to this invasive pest. This is Nick Vanderpine, Kelly Church, for News from Indian Country TV. Look